Ladies and gentlemen, Margaret Minakozzi. Good evening, everyone. Buonasera, benvenuti. I would like to thank you all for being here tonight. It is such a special occasion and it has been made more meaningful by having each of you with us today to celebrate. Thank you. Large part... A large part of all of our lives have been my inspirational mother, Christian's nonna. My mother really loved Christian and to a large extent was one of his mentors. She was a great inspiration to Christian and I recognise that they close bond. Christian has always been a compassionate and loving man and it is wonderful to see how that love has been seen by all my family. I would like to make a special mention of Lucy and formally welcome you Lucy into the family. You are a blessing to all of us. To all of us, and especially Christian. As a mother, all I've ever wanted for my son is for him to be happy. Seeing how happy Lucy has made him is the greatest gift a mother could ask for her son. I wish to formally acknowledge Christian's Dear great auntie, Zia Nicolina. Zia Nicolina. Nicolina, Nicolina. Who is with us tonight and is 91 years old. Oh. My only surviving aunt. She really is our second mum. She's always there for love. She, um, she has uh, loved Christian from a very young baby and has always loved and cherished, cherished this relationship. Grazie, zia, per tutto. Un bacio, zia. Dear Christian and Lucy, may you continue to love, grow and laugh together from this day forward. I wish you both all the happiness that life has to offer and my love and many blessings for your beautiful family, always. To our guests, it has been a great honour to have you all here to help our family make this occasion memorable. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, may I call to the microphone a very special person in this union. She is my sister, the maternal grandmother of Leonardo and Lavender. She is a person who is dearly loved within our family and is one of the strongest and most sincere people that I know. She has done a wonderful job raising Lucy and let's face it, we would not be here tonight without her. Ladies and gentlemen, the mother of the bride, Emma Kelly. Do you want a hand or do you want to go to no, I'm right. Welcome everyone, and I thank you for coming here tonight to celebrate Christian's wedding. You know, Christian, not only am I grateful to be invited to join the festivities, but what really impressed me was that you were gracious enough to extend the invitation to my daughter, Lucy. <laughs> but seriously,
seriously, isn't it wonderful to see such a happy couple sitting up there? Firstly, I want to acknowledge two very important people in Lucy's life who would have dearly loved to be here, but unfortunately they could not. <laughs> well, because they're dead. <laughs> Sorry, it's our humour. <laughs> they are Lucy's late grandparents, my parents, Peter and Rosie Kelly, or as Lucy called them, Marnie and Wick. Lucy, they would have loved and been overjoyed and so proud, not only to see you looking so beautiful, but to see what an incredible mother you have become to our darlings, Leonardo and Lavender. Secondly, Lucy, I would like to acknowledge your other grandparents, Olive and Tony Bishop, <laughs> who are here tonight. They have always been such a constant in your life and what a wonderful connection they have maintained with you over the years. <clears throat> Lastly, you have always been a wonder to me and given me so much joy. I have always been amazed that you grew up and thrived amongst my raucous siblings where it was almost impossible to get a word in, which ironically kind of came in handy for when you met Christian. <laughs> But seriously, I love you both very much and wish you all the joy, happiness and love in your future together. Leonardo wants to say something. Chicken nugget. <laughs> A special thank you, ladies and gentlemen, to Margaret and Emma Kelly, the mothers of the bride and groom. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to the microphone Uncle Nick Mendicozzi. Nick has played a significantly large part in Christian and Lucy's life and has been a great support and mentor to Christian throughout his life. Please make Uncle Nick feel welcome. Margaret tells me that um, this evening is being uh, live streamed uh, to our relatives and friends in Italy. So, um, is that correct, Margaret? So, before I um, say anything, I'd just like to say a few things in Italian. Uh, vorrei dare un caro saluto ai nostri parenti in Italia. Ci dispiace che non state qui con noi. E speriamo che ci vediamo presto e con. Uh, l'amore che c'è fra le nostre famiglie che possiamo andare a continuare come una grande famiglia auguri a tutti e speriamo che state a divertire questo, questa occasione così lontano ma purtroppo la vita è così so thank you for that firstly uh, good evening and welcome I think uh, uh, Paul, uh, Margaret and um, Emma have um, uh, greeted everybody and welcomed you all. Um, I'm sure that you're all enjoying the evening so far. From what I hear from uh, my big shot nephew, uh, it's going to be a, a big night, long night, and probably a very expensive night, but that's the way it goes with Christian. Uh, as uh, Paul has told you, uh, my name is Nick, I'm Margaret's brother, and I'm Christian's uncle. Uh, Needless to say, um, Christian has been in my life since the moment of his birth. I remember the visit at the Calvary Hospital with my late mother. We saw this giant man walking down the um, passageway. We thought he was uh, a doctor. So I said, excuse me, I'd like to know where Margaret Minicozzi is. 
and the guy took his mask off and said, it's me, you idiot. And it was uh, Marcello, Christian's father. Anyway, that was another time and another place. Uh, Christian, Margaret and Marcello were in Adelaide for a long while until they relocated to, uh, to Munich. Uh, I went to visit them uh, one year in Munich. It was absolutely freezing cold and stupid Christian came outside with me and locked the door. He went inside and I was left outside in the snow. So that's one of my first experiences with Christian. Uh, Christian was here in Adelaide for a number of years and uh, during that time my late father was alive. <sighs> Margaret has already talked about the relationship between Christian and my mother, but Christian also had a huge personal tender relationship with my late father. Um, I recall at the airport when they left and my father, I'd never seen him cry, but he cried that time. Um, when Christian, Margaret and Marcello came back, we had to find a school for Christian. And I'm sure you can appreciate that Christian's uh, no small person. And of course, he had been overseas, he knew how to speak German, he knew how to speak Italian, and he got by a little bit in English. So we had, to, uh, we had to find a place, and I think we put him in at St Ignatius Junior School. Good Catholic Jesuit school. Well, I don't seem to get on with anybody. And uh, I remember we had a, um, an incident with a Jesuit priest who was the head, uh, the, the head uh, master at uh, Jesuit, uh, at the, some, what's it called, St Ignatius Junior School, over Christian. And uh, I wasn't very pleased with the outcome because I didn't like the way that he was uh, going to organise Christian's furtherance of his education. So I said to Margaret, get him out. So we told the, uh, the Jesuit to piss off, politely of course, uh, and I still go to St Ignatius as my parish. And uh, we took him and brought him to uh, St Joseph up the road, Tranmere. Needless to say, he didn't last long there either. <laughs> and he ended up at CBC. Now, I don't want to say this, Christian. I don't want to tell the story, but Christian at that time was getting on, growing tall, and there was a little friend of his called Votino. Votino was like, um, how can I compare? You know, Christian's six foot something, this guy was three inches. But uh, for some reason, Christian was absolutely intimidated by this little pipsqueak. And uh, at that time, my parents were still doing the catering, or my mother was. And of course, we stocked alcohol, cigarettes and the like. And Christian was obliged to bring the stock of cigarettes and booze to the CBC Junior School Camp. And of course, he got found out. So he got sent back home. So I had another issue to deal with. Uh, at that time, Margaret and Marcello were still together. And I won't tell you, I won't bore you with the story about the big shoe that nearly hit me at a million miles an hour when I had to go and tell Marcello what happened. But um, then from there, I got him into Saints, and I think he was pretty settled at Saints, happy at Saints, and uh, did, did pretty well. Lucas went to Saints, my boys went to Saints, Leo is now at Saints. So the relationship with uh, the school has been long and, um, and beneficial for everybody. Uh, anyway, here we are today. Today we have Christian Lucy Leo Lavender. I live in fervent hope now that with the advent of Lucy into Christian's life and more particularly because of Leo and Lavender that I can now retire from the Save the Christian Foundation. No, thank you. 
but uh, Christian, because you are my nephew, because you are the son of my sister, because you are my blood, and I love you, I'll always be there. I'm absolutely certain that now Christian, with Lucy and with Leo and Lavender, he'll move forward as a mature, responsible husband and father. Because if he doesn't, he'll have me to deal with. Now, again, Margaret's touched on my mother. Emma's touched on her parents. I had the privilege of knowing your father. I appeared before him many times in the district court. I had, uh, and they're all quite good. And I must say that I had, I, I had a bit of a relationship with him. In that, uh, I recall when I was early, for example, for a hearing, and I'd be waiting for my adversary. He and I would engage in conversation. I remember one of the things he told me was, uh, "Never trust a chiropractor." I hope that there are no chiropractors in the room. Uh, and he went about to tell me why, and I've never forgotten that story. So it is very sad that uh, neither uh, Paul's parents, Emma's parents, can't be here. It's sad that my mother and father can't be here, but that's the way life is. We all have our turn. But talking about my mother, I can say that one of the greatest joys of her life was him, was Leo, was Leonardo. Leonardo, Leonardo brought joy, brought, brought enlivenment to my mother. When, um, <laughs> calm down, Leo. When, um, when Christian would bring him to the nursing home on a Sunday morning regularly, she just changed from um, just existing to living. Leo had an enormous effect on my mother, and for that, I'd be eternally grateful. Anyway, we're here not to delve on the past. We're here to celebrate a wonderful night. We're here to celebrate the union, the Christian union, a union of which I'm very pleased about, of Christian and Lucy, and also recognise Leo and Lavender. And I don't know where Lavender is, and I'm very surprised that she's not running around and uh, creating havoc, but uh, she's here somewhere. Lucy, you've been an inspiration to Christian. You've been the most important factor in Christian's life. And Leo and Lavender, of course, have added to that importance and to that significance. You make a wonderful family unit. I wish you very well moving forward. I know that you will be a loving family and you will look after Leo and Lavender and you will move forward. I want to pay tribute to the Kelly family, if I may. Uh, I want to thank all of you for supporting Christian and Lucy and for welcoming Christian into your family as we have, Lu have welcomed Lucy into our family. I also want to recognise, as already has been done, Tony and Olive. And may I say that life sometimes is a bit strange. Tony and Olive live in uh, Osborne Street, Hackney, correct? My mother lived on Hackney Road, just around the corner. My mother, Tony and Olive, were friends before Christian and Lucy met. So, the connection goes back a long way. A special and particular thanks has to go with gratitude to Margaret and Emma and to Lucas, not only for their patience and help to both Christian and Lucy, but for their love and consideration for Leo and Lavender. Please continue to enjoy the evening. Join with me in a round of applause for Christian and Lucy, and in particular, a cheer for Leo and Lavender. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick, for those very heartfelt words. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. An important person that is not Christian Lavolzi. 
included as one of the trusted groomsmen, and you uh, please note that neither, none of these men here tonight are the best man. That might be me, but it's not one of them. We have a worst man. The, I'm, I'm not the worst man. Included, uh, he's a fine, upstanding man who wishes, wishes to share some words of thanks on behalf of the bridesmaids. He is one of Christian's oldest and dearest friends. Please welcome Mr. Toby Barnes. Cheers, Paul. Now, good evening. Thank you for your time. Your time is important to me. <laughs> My name is Toby. I have one of Christian's groomsmen and oldest friends, as Paul has quite rightly said. Now, I'd also like to take this time to um, propose a toast and congratulate uh, the bridesmaids on the wonderful role they have done today. So to the bridesmaids. Um, Christian and I first met when we were 10 years old at a friend's birthday party. It's not often you have true lifelong friendships, but this one is. I'm honoured to have Christian as the godfather to my beautiful daughter Daisy. Christian is the kindest friend anyone could ask for. Generosity should be his middle name. Whenever I turn up to Christian's house, he always pulls out something amazing from his cellar for us to drink. And normally not just one. He's that kind of guy. A legendary host who always makes you feel special. I mean, just look at the show that he's put on for us tonight. It's completely normal to have a five course degustation dinner at a wedding with matching wines, followed by a whiskey and cigar bar, let alone all the other decadents we are being treated to. For 200 people. When, when Christian first attended Saints at age 13, he immediately made his mark. He quickly established himself as the king at lunchtime. He used to sit proud at the table outside the tuck shop and outsource his lunch order to his minions around him. <laughs> get me a pie and a nice coffee and get something for yourself, was a common line as he handed over a tenner. For the younger audience, that was a lot of money back then. That generosity and outsourcing was, was a sign for what was to come for Christian, a savvy entrepreneur, a great leader, and of course, a business expert on growth mindset. Christian's love for storytelling, with his robust chat and passion for food, made us fast friends. After school, I do fondly remember many afternoons walking down to the Minicozzi Reception Centre and sneaking in the back kitchen doors in the hope that Christian's grandma had made fresh pasta. We were more than happy to oblige our services as quality control testers. I think our mutual admiration for the delicious food started here. And as our friendship grew over the years, so did our waistlines. Now, to the spaghetti incident. It has to be told. It's a story of determination, passion for winning, and of course, a lot of food. It was 1993 and Virgin Records in the Maya Centre were hosting a massive promotion for Guns N' Roses, the Spaghetti Incident album, and hosted a spaghetti eating competition. To our delight, Christian's name was drawn to compete. On the big day, Christian took his place at the table, sized up his opponents and worked out who his main opposition were. I think Christian was expecting something along the lines of authentic Italian spaghetti with some homemade Italian sauce and grated parmesan. However, to his disgust, what was presented to him were four large cans of cold Heinz spaghetti <laughs> slopped into a bowl. I think that was the end of it for some of the contestants, but not Christian. His napkin was tucked in, on your marks, set, go. Off they went, and Chris had started shoveling that stuff into his mouth as fast as he could. There was a lot of yelling, shouting, cheering, as the store was completely packed. And before you knew it, Christian stood up and roared. Ah! <laughs> he had annihilated his opposition. 
when Christian had finished, the guy in second was only about halfway through his bowl. I think the organisers were quite shocked at his speed. Afterwards, we took the poor guy out for a Macca's burger to celebrate, which he somehow finished. After school, Christian graduated from Swiss Hotel's Le Cordon Bleu and searched the world far and wide for his perfect girl, trialling many on his travels. While for a long time no one stuck, his career prospered. Over that time, he's created and run very successful fine dining restaurants, built multiple businesses, sold them and moved on to the next challenge. Christian is also a successful published author, appearing in the Amazon non-fiction bestsellers list. His book sold thousands of copies in the first week and you will still find each of these copies in his garage. But there has always been something missing. So who would have thought that one night, all those years later, at an underground bar on Hindley Street at 2.30am, Christian sees the girl of his dreams, goes up and says his customary pick-up line, Me Tarzan, you Jane. <laughs> well, you can all guess what happened next. Jane laughed, walked away, and Christian spent the rest of the night drinking and talking to Lucy. <laughs> My wife has told me that when I'm out, nothing good happens after midnight. On this occasion, I'm pleased to say she was wrong. But seriously, all those among us who know Lucy know that she is a wonderful and caring person. She deserves a good husband. Thank God Christian knocked her up, not once, but twice, and married her before she could find one. <laughs> Smart move, buddy. Well played, like the leadership expert you are. Anyway, wasn't today extraordinary? Seeing the bride walk down the aisle, I'm sure we all agree that Lucy looks simply stunning. The groom, on the other hand, was lost for words for the first time in his life. I do have to say though, Christian, just how lucky you are. You will be leaving here today with a wife who is warm, loving, caring, supportive and a superb mother. And Lucy, how lucky you are as well. You'll be leaving here today having gained a beautiful dress. And just remember, Lucy, to take comfort in Oscar Wilde's words, a man who says his wife can't take a joke forgets that she took him. <laughs> Not yet. All jokes aside, though, behind every great man, there is an even greater woman. No statement could be more true when it comes to you, Lucy. I can see how incredibly happy you have made Christian over these past years and just how much you have helped to change his life for the better. Not to mention you have enriched it with the addition of your two gorgeous kids, Leonardo and Lavender. Outside. He's always been an amazing guy, but now he has wider horizons and a greater reason to succeed. You have always been his biggest cheerleader and provide him with the best support crew when it's been needed. I think you're a wonderful couple and I look forward to many more happy times together in the future. Speaking of happy times, Lucy and Christian, I hear you are taking the next two weeks off, the first week for the honeymoon, and the next week to build the website about the honeymoon. <laughs> Do we have time for a little game? Yeah. One minute? One minute. One minute, all right. Christian, Lucy, stand up. Back to back. Lucy. Hold your bouquet. Christian, get a drink, not red. Here we go. All right, we're just going to have a little bit of fun, just a bit of uh, 
loosen them up a little bit and find out a bit more about the bride and groom. So this is the deal. If the answer is Lucy, Lucy raise your bouquet. If the answer is Christian, Christian raise your drink. So we'll have a practice run. First one. Who said I love you first? There we go. All right. Who is the better cook? I reckon. I reckon. I've tasted your food, Lucy. It's beautiful. Who complains more? Raise your drink, buddy. Glass up. Who has a better sense of humour? Oh, very diplomatic, Christian. Who's better with money? <laughs> Who's better in a crisis? <laughs> Who's the neatest and tidiest? The domestic goddess at home. Who's a more hand-on parent? <laughs> I, d I didn't ask Father Theo this. Who's the better singer? Who has to have the last word? <laughs> we'll probably find this out later. Who is the better dancer? Fifty-fifty. Who takes longer to get ready? Who's the funniest? Huh? Who's the funniest? Oh, well done, that's well done. All done. All right. I just I've got one more thing. Um, sorry. Just to conclude, I'd just like to make a toast to this beautiful couple. In life, you don't marry the person you can live with. You marry the person you can't live without. Live together with purpose. <laughs> to Christian and Lucy Lavolsi. Thanks very much, Toby. Um, can I just say that uh, we are running a touch behind, but certainly. Um, bridal table, certainly start, and for those that have their meals, please start eating, that's fine. Um, you can sit down, Kristen. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the utmost pleasure of introducing to you the second most important person here today. I speak, of course, of the groom, Mr. Christian Lavolsi. I thought long and hard about how one might introduce such an important man. What might I say about such an important man that quite frankly he wouldn't say about himself? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware, I come from a family, a large family, and I have five siblings who are here today. Out of those five siblings, I only have one brother, Uncle Jay. We have always got on like a house on fire, and it has always been him and I against the world. We had the pleasure and the enjoyment of welcoming into our family Uncle Glenn Grogamulla and Uncle Christian Pake. James and I recognise them as our brothers. We all hold each other in great regard and we enjoy a strong friendship. Today, I would like to formally acknowledge and have you witness that we welcome Christian into our wolf pack. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please pray silence for the man of the hour, the big kahuna. He is the man in charge, the big cheese, the king of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Christian Lavalsi.
But that wasn't fucking embarrassing, was it? I'm pretty sure that's how I'm going to end my speech. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I have uh, a speech here, and it won't take anywhere near the 45 minutes for the 15 minutes that were allocated. It's funny how I got told that I had to be on cue for six or seven minutes, while the rest of them just decided to chew me in front of my new wife, my beautiful wife. So now let me stick to script. Leo, just sit, darling. Okay, so welcome and thank you for joining us uh, to witness on this glorious day, and what a wonderful day. I got many messages from people asking me if I bribed God to give me the weather. Unfortunately, I don't have that level of power. I wish I did. Um, It would appear that everybody's having a good time. Um, I hope you're enjoying um, the wines, particularly on this table, table table seven. Um, The child table, but the most important table to us as a family. Not because our babies are on there, but our other cousins are on there, and I'm very proud to be a member of this family. So the weather definitely was turned on for us, and we really appreciate it, but you turned it on. You all look amazing, so thank you. I want to start... By the way, if you guys could see everybody's speeches, they've written them in size 55 font. I now realise I should have gone bigger than size 10 on three pages. I want to start by thanking our mums for their unconditional love. I've got to look that way as well. Uh, For unconditional love and commitment to both Lucy and I and our beautiful children who today are being incredibly annoying, but I love you, Leonardo and Lavender. You both... (laughs) You both go out of your way to do what you can to give us the very best opportunity to thrive, and I thank you, and we love you for it. Uncle Nick, for me, you are the father I never had, and I am in many ways a reflection of your values and work ethic, and I thank you with all my heart for what you do for Lucy and I, and above all, the love that you show and demonstrate to Leonardo and Lavender. Like our mums, you are an integral part of our lives that no words can explain. We love you. Thank you. Had I known what you were going to say, I may have changed that. But it is in here, but I still mean it, so it's all good. Our families, I can't single you all out (laughs) because on that side, there is a lot of people, all right? Um, But more importantly, I want to thank you for welcoming both Lucy and I into our respective families, the Kellys, the Dragomullers, the Pakes, the Bishops. From the first day, you embraced me as one of your own, you made it so easy for me to integrate. Uh, And this has been foundational uh, to the outstanding relationship that Lucy and I have formed and the love that flows in our home. And I know that all of you and our closest and dearest know that that is a really important value in our home. It's the way that the love flows. To the Minikosi and Lavalsi family that are here and abroad, you welcome Lucy in in, in our home with open arms, like she was one of us from day one. And again, this played a critical role in how our relationship has formed. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that acceptance is critical. No matter what you look like, who you are or what you do, being accepted provides you with all the elements that you need to thrive in your life. To our late grandmothers, Rosie Kelly and Armida Minikotzi, you both were significant role models in our childhood and in our lives, and we are so blessed, and I mean this, so blessed that we had the opportunity to share that love with you. I really do wish that they could be here today alongside Aldo and Elia Lavolsi and also Alessandro Minicozzi, my late grandfather, to see Lucy walk down the aisle and stand by my side as my wife. Okay. I know that Lucy wishes that her late grandfather, Peter Kelly, aka Wiki, could be here today. And I really wish that I could make that dream come true for you. I really do. There are just some things I can't do, and that's one of them. Um, One of my only few regrets in life is that I never got the chance to meet Peter. But through Lucy's stories and our family, I know that I have his blessing, and more importantly, that I know that he played a part in Lucy and I finding each other. Although Philip would argue that this was all he's doing, um, wherever he is, yeah, yeah, he would argue it was his. Um, I promised myself I wouldn't cry. I cried so many times writing this. Um, We are truly blessed um, to also have Lucy's paternal grandparents, Olive and Tony Bishop here, 
today, um, and also my auntie, my great auntie Zinni Colina, who has really been another grandmother to me my whole life. And I really am lucky that she is still here and that Olive and Tony are here to be here with us today. Um, to, our, to our groomsmen and bridesmaids. <sighs> right. You guys actually look pretty good, girls. Boys, you look all right. Now nah, the girls look pretty hot. They, uh, I, I didn't recognise half of them as they walked up. I'm like, who are these people? Um, that's not the people that were at the rehearsal dinner. Um, I did recognise my wife. She looked amazing, um, as I did my kids. But um, uh, Tiff, uh, Chris, Esther, Bonnie, thank you for spending countless hours putting together all the stationery and signage for today. Uh, a lot of bottles of champagne, Prosecco and gin were consumed in our house with lots of fun. Uh, and above all, I want to thank you for supporting Lucy um, and making today so very special for her. I know that this has been the fairy tale she's, she's always wanted, even though she's never admitted it, except the champagne tower that she got anyway. Right. So, my boys, well, just so you know, Toby is a chiropractor. <laughs> so, yeah, Uncle Nick, you can do whatever you want with him. Uh, well, what can be said about the four of you that I didn't say to either of you at each of the bachelor parties that we've had so far? Um, Toby's the oldest friend in the room. Um, we date back more than 30 years and combined with Ricky, Mike and Lucas, we have over 100 years together. That's a scary thought. Makes us sound rather old in, in that we are. And we're okay with that, although Toby still persists with the comb over. Um, I just thought I'd have to take one dig at you <laughs> after what you did. Thank you, gentlemen, for being there for me through the good and the bad times. Toby, thanks for not actually listing all the bad times. I've had plenty of those. And if it wasn't for a lot of you in this room, I probably wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be having dinner with this amazing woman and all of you amazing friends. To my brother Lucas, I bet you didn't think you'd get a plug in this. I can't believe, I can't believe we are now over 40. And I remember the day you were born and I was kind of excited and then I realised this was hell, right? But how far we have come from that day in Munich in Germany, we really need to find you a wife. Because you are getting on, mate. <laughs> right? All right. To our friends, right? And that is all of you in this room. Thank you uh, for the many of you that have travelled from overseas and interstate. It's a huge commitment. Perhaps not as much as marriage, but it's a big one. Right? We thank you for being here today. You have all played various roles in our relationship and in our lives. And, and we are who we are because of you. Our experiences shape us and our relationship guide us into the future. We look to you to help us build more memories through many experiences to come. To our children, Leonardo and Lavender, I can hear her, yeah. To Leonardo and Lavender, no. you changed our lives for the better. You both look spectacular. Leonardo, you are handsome and full of life. Lavender, you are beautiful. Your energy and love is boundless. You both make us so proud and we love you unconditionally. You truly are a blessing to us, and to share this day with you both makes it even more emotional and more special. We love you so very much. I'm going to risk this off very quickly. To ask all the suppliers that have been involved in today, you, you don't put a show on like this, no matter how good you are, and I'm clearly not that good, despite what all the bullshit that everybody up here said earlier. I am a man of the people, and I'm not running for government, so don't worry. Um, Uncle Paul for MC, thank you. Uh, Randall Tomic for the toast. Uh, Mitzi, Emma, Sato, Simon and the entire team at the wine centre. I know we're only up to two courses and we've got plenty of food and wine to go, but you guys have put up with me, which is epic in many ways. Jason from Adelaide Starlight Entertainment. Joe James and the James Brothers and, and Claudia. Right, Oz Spinello, a photographer who's unfortunately had to go and sick. So I encourage you all to take heaps of photos, post them online, use the hashtag Lavolsi Wedding so we can find them later. Um, I want to thank uh, Sean Cummings, our videographer, uh, Father Theo and Norm Inglis at St Peter's College and even Tim Browning, the headmaster, to make himself present today, to Rita Daha for the spectacular flowers. I encourage you to take an arrangement home at the end of the day, please. Um, to the ministry readers, Luke and Max, I'm pretty sure Prince Alfred won that battle, disappointingly for me, but Luke, you did try. 
So thank you, Kaz, wherever you, wherever you are, hiding. Where is he? Where's Luke? There, hiding. Right. Uh, Maxie, you did well, buddy. Um, to our ushers, Sophie, Poppy, Kevy, Olivia, Beatrice and Rosie, you guys really turned it on. You look awesome today. Well done, guys. Um, I'm going to thank you after. You already got mentioned in the speech, buddy. All right, to our friends who supported us with booze, Frank and Kirsty M- Marie Midlow, Orazio Baldino, Misha Illich, Randall Tomic, Barry and Gabriella White, Anthony Catenary, and Sam and Catherine Brown. I've got to say, that dress by Christina Tridante from Couture, Love and Madness is shit hot, and you look amazing in it, right? Um, Joseph Azumko for the 12 bloody fittings that he made me do for this suit. Ash at Ashley Suit Direct and Philip with an F for the tunes, but also, honestly, for dragging Lucy into the bar to have an espresso martini back in 2014 and not even knowing that I'd actually fell in love with her a year earlier. Right, now to the highlight, to my wife, Lucy Lavolsi. All right, now I've got to make sure I don't cry. All right. You are the love of my life. You complete me. You make me a better human. And I can't imagine living in this world without you. You brighten my day just like the sun lights the earth. I am blessed to have you by my side, creating memories and a legacy for our children. I knew it would be you the very first time I saw you. I never believed in love at first sight, but this all changed for me in July 2013. I came home and I even said to my mother, Mum, I found the woman I want to marry, and she just laughed. She's like, you're never going to get married. <laughs> I need you with me, always and forever. You look beautiful. I'm speechless when I saw you standing at the doors of the chapel today. You are smart, caring, loving, and selfless. You excite me and surprise me daily. You encourage me to live my best life, and you rarely complain. And I mean that, you rarely complain. You value my work ethic and understand my purpose and support me on my quest to transform the world one person at a time. You are my angel, my light, my life, and my fulfillment. I wanna just read you out a sonnet, sonnet number 43, How Do I Love Thee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, which captures much of what I wanna say to you. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely and and they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use. In my old griefs and with my childhood's faith, I love thee a love I seem to lose. With my lost saints, I love thee with the breath smiles, tears of all my life and in God and if God chooses I shall but love thee better after death. Lucy Rose, my wife, I love you. I think we should get Lucy to say a few words. Come on! No, you, come over here. No, no, mummy's doing a speech. Come on. Come in. Give mummy the mic. Come here. Um, I'd just like to thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. You guys have made this day so much more special. Um, I am officially Lucy Lavolsi. It was worth it. Can, can we just give Lavender a two minute, two seconds? Yeah, talking to that dog. Go on, quickly. Little Marnie, here, little Yay.